Hey guys, hope you're all doing good. So in this video, we will be learning how to simulate flow through a centrifugal pump. Now for this particular exercise, I will be creating a mock-up geometry, so it might not be that accurate, but it helps me teach you the moving reference frame concept that we will be using uh, to finish this particular simulation. All right, so just make sure that you start with a new part file and uh, we are going to select the top plane and we'll start sketching. I'm going to select the circle tool first and I'm going to set the radius to 0 0.02. Click OK. Now remember I'm using MKS system. So please make sure that you're always so please make sure that you're also using the same thing. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to draw another circle here which is going to go up to 0 0.04. Now remember, we are typing in the radius. This circle is going to help us guide the blades. Now, as far as the dimensions, feel free to change them, but definitely watch the video once to see what I'm doing, and then you can play with the geometry. I'm going to be using the arc tool uh, to create my blades. So, you know, that's why I need the outer circle, right? And I'm just going to create one more arc. Somewhere there. And you can see I'm kind of eyeballing it because like I said, this is just a made up geometry. All right, so this is going to be one of my impellers. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to use the trim utility, cut this guy. And what I can also do is I can just, uh, and then, uh, you know, this should be good. So I can exit sketch now. Oh, actually, sorry, we need to go back to the sketch because we need to pattern it, correct? So I'm just going to go to circular pattern selection and we're going to select one feature at a time. Now notice as you're selecting it, SolidWorks is giving you a nice preview. All right, so we have about four impellers now, sorry, four blades now. So I'm just going to increase the count to be five. You can use six if you want to, but I'm just going to stick with five. And then finally, uh, what you need to do is you need to use the trim entities and just make sure that you delete this extra section. All right. So that way we will be able to extrude this particular shape to generate our impeller. Okay. So I think that looks good. So let's click OK, exit sketch and go to features, extrude, select this guy. And what we are going to do is we are going to be using the mid plane. All right. And uh, you know what? So one centimeter, that should be fine. Okay. So that is basically our impeller. You know, like I said, it looks really, really simple, but that's fine. All right. So the next thing that I want to finish is my volute or also called as the outer casing. And this time we are just going to go back to top view again, create a new sketch. And we are going to select this guy. And we are going to type in 0 0.045, right? So our volute is about 4.5 centimeters in diameter. Okay, so that's that. And then let's click on exit sketch and we are going to extrude that as well. And while you're extruding, just make sure that you select the mid plane option. And uh, remember, we are going to put in something like 0 0.02. And, and we are going to put and we are going to put in a distance of 0 0.015. So that's about 1.5 centimeters. All right, there we go. Click OK. All right, now one thing that you need to do is, uh, while extruding, you need to be very careful. So for example, here, if I go to section view, and if I just select my plane, you can see that my impeller is not there at all. Why is that? Well, that's because when I did the extrusion, there is an option called merge result, which has been selected by default. You need to uncheck that. And now 
if I use the cut view, change the plane, you can see that my impeller is present. This is really, really important. Okay. All right. So this is our volute. Uh, and what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to draw a casing on top. And, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the inlet runner on the top. So let's create a circle. And we're going to type in 0 0.015 for radius. So let's put 1.5 centimeters. And this is going to be our and this is going to be our inlet runner okay in other words this is the entry length and we are just going to say that this is about seven centimeters long and type okay okay so the next thing that i want to do is i want to basically draw the exit length or the the next thing that i want to draw is the exit length so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to top plane first look at it from front and what I want is I want to first create a sketch and then I'm just going to use a center line I'm going to be using the circle as a tangent and we're just going to position our intake somewhere here So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the circle as a tangent and I'm going to be positioning our outflow boundary or the outlet somewhere here. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be drawing a line. And I'm going to be using the smart dimensions to measure this distance. And I'm going to say that this is going to be 0. 005 <clears throat> okay so I think that looks okay so one more so one so one more time I just want to enable the cut view make sure that we're doing okay all right the reason why I'm drawing this is I'm going to be drawing a circle here and I'm just going to be sweeping and I'm just going to be sweeping it so that way we will get our uh, exit length. So in order for us to sweep, we need to basically define a plane here. So that's fine. We can go to Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is draw a circle here and I need to sweep it along this line. For that, I need to create a plane. For that, I need to first exit my sketch and then go back to features. And uh, I need to first create a reference geometry, which is a plane. I'm going to select the solid line. Do not select the dotted line. Select the solid line and then select this point right here. Okay, and when you do that, we are just going to basically say set origin on curve and click OK. So now we have a very nice plane here and we are going to sketch on this plane. OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle with this as an origin and I'm just going to use this. Use this construction line for my radius. So if you zoom in here, you can see that this is what I'm doing. OK, and then you can exit the sketch. All right, so now we are ready for our sweep tool. So let's click on sweep and we're going to be selecting um, this for our profile. And if I hit OK, there we go. So my volute is complete. So let's just use uh, the cut view again to make sure that everything looks good. So now you can see that the volute has been merged, but the problem is our impeller is missing. Why is that? Well, if you go back to the sweep tool, there is an option called options. So expand that and you will see that merge results has been selected. This needs to be unchecked again. And if you hit OK, and let's go back to our section view, <clears throat> modify planes. There we go. You can see that our impeller is there uh, nice and clean. Uh, the issue, the problem, however, is that uh, this volute, the problem, however, is that the volute is not complete. Right. So for that, what we are going to do is we are going to use uh, for that. We are going to just select 
our sweep and uh, box and box extrude 2 which is our volute and outlet runner and make sure that you select the same two guys Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select boss extrude 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to direct editing and I'm going to go to combine, uh, select this guy, box extrude 3 and I'm going to select the outlet runner, uh, click on show preview and we're going to be doing a boolean operation. We are going to use the add method and you can see that in the preview all the components are getting joined. So let's click OK. And now if I go back to my cut view or section view. You will see that you will see that the connection has been made perfectly and you still have your impeller uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a shell so go back to features click on shell select this face and this face click on show preview and you can see that currently the preview shows that only this can be made into a shell that's because our parameter uh, our shell thickness is set to a large number so let's go to one millimeters and now you can see that the shell is able to penetrate successfully. So if you click OK, what we have managed to create is we have created a perfect uh, volute and an impeller. If I change my section plane, you can see what's going on, right? So we have we have a we have a solid volute with some thickness, and we also have a solid impeller. Now, an important thing that needs to be done is with this you can run a CFD simulation. But remember, the meshing in SOLIDWORKS is not that great and hence it's not going to rotate or it's not going to deform the mesh as the impeller is rotating, which it does in real life. So what we basically do is we basically use an approach called as the moving reference frame approach. And what we do is we create a zone around the impeller. Now, what we do is inside this zone, a zone is nothing but a volume. So inside this volume, what we do is we basically add some additional terms in the governing equations which basically simulate the effect of rotation. In other words, we are not actually rotating the impeller, but we are simulating the effect of this rotation by modifying the fundamental governing equations. Okay, so for that we need to create a zone and let's do that. So I'm going to go back to my top view. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the transparency of some parts so that I can see what's going on. Okay, I think that's better. So now let me select top view and look at it in the normal direction. Click on sketch. And I'm going to be selecting this guy that's going to be the center and my zone needs to be big enough that it covers the impeller but it should not be big enough that it actually intersects with the casing so something like this should do so always zoom out to make sure that your impeller is completely inside this newly created circle all right so that seems okay so let's click okay here uh, click exit sketch and what we are going to do is we are going to extrude and for extrusion the same rule applies let's just look at it from the side view you can see that this right here is my impeller so I need to confine this within that I'm going to be using the mid plane option and we are just going to reduce this such that we are just selecting the impeller and nothing else okay so now what I've done is I've created this nice zone around my impeller so if I rotate the geometry you'll be able to see that 
okay so this is a very tricky step you might uh, get this wrong couple of times uh, do check the size of my extrusion 0.011 meters and also the radius that I had used for this zone creation so that you can recreate it all right so let's click OK, but before we do that, we need to make sure that merge results has been unchecked. So this is an important step. All right, so looks like our uh, simulation, looks like our CAD model is set up correctly. So let me click on save and I'm going to create a new folder called centrifugal pump. I'm just going to call this as CP and I'm going to save it. Note that this is actually Oh, looks like I've already saved a document called CP. So I'll just type in CP underscore new. All right, so that looks okay. So now we are ready to do the flow simulation. Okay, so let's go to flow simulation. We are going to be using the wizard. For project, you can just call this a centrifugal pump. CP, click on next. We are going to use the default unit system. So nothing's going to change there. This is an internal flow simulation and we are going to be doing a steady state simulation that's why time dependent has been unchecked and we are going to be using rotation and here there are two methods there is a uh, local region averaging and then there is the other method is local region sliding and then there is global rotation now as far as uh, now since this is an now since this is an introductory level cfd course i'm not going to go into a lot of details there is a lot of literature that compares these two methods. So if you're interested in knowing the math behind that, I would suggest you go and read them. All right. So now that I've done this, let me click on next. And since we are interested in simulating water, I'm going to go under liquids, select water. Just double click, make sure that you've added it. We are not interested in cavitation. Uh, if you're interested in simulating cavitation, make sure that you have accurate boundary conditions. If you don't, then things might actually go really bad. So for now, we are not interested in cavitation. So let's just click on next. And we are just going to go with default uh, conditions for uh, the wall thermal conditions and roughness. Click next, finish. All right. So we get a message saying that the fluid volume recognition step has failed. That is because we have not closed the geometry. So SolidWorks is having a hard time figuring out where the control volume is, where the fluid volume is. So let's click on S because we need to be creating lids. So I'm just going to select this face here to create the inlet lid. And we'll just create this face to select the outlet lid. And we'll just click on OK. We'll just click on S because we need to reset the computational domain. Click on S again. All right. So now an important thing that you need to do is we are creating a zone, correct? This zone, as it is, is a solid, correct? So we are basically having the impeller inside this particular zone, the solid that we have created, which doesn't make any sense. Hence, we need to take up a special step to let SolidWorks know that, hey, that is just my rotation zone and that does not interfere with the fluid. It's not a wall. It's not a physical wall. How do I do that? I can click on my input data and click on component control. So here, what I can what I can do is I can just select components which I don't want in my simulation. So I'm going to be selecting boss extrude four, which I believe is our control volume. You can just rotate and see it. So this is our rotation zone. So I've unchecked that and let me just click OK. All right. So now let's go to our rotation zone and click on insert rotating region. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be selecting boss extrude 4 right so when i click on that nothing happens uh, you might also experience the same thing so what you can do is click on select other and just make sure that you select boss extrude 4 okay so this has given me problems a couple of times for some reason when i select it from the feature tree it doesn't appear but when you do it this way it appears so we are just going to say that um, you know the rotor is going to spin at 1000 radians per second Again, just made up number. So let's click OK. And I think this looks good. So next we are going to be assigning boundary conditions. So what I'm going to do is at the inlet, uh, I'm going to basically say that I know the value for pressure and it's going to be just environmental pressure 
so let's click on select other and we have to select the lid always remember that click ok so that is my pressure boundary condition and at the outlet what I typically want to know is the pressure because a pump pressure is just the fluid right so I typically know the mass flow rate so I can provide the mass flow rate at the outlet and I can determine what the pressure is going to be so let's just click on boundary conditions insert boundary conditions and this time I'm going to first clear everything and right click select other make sure that we select lid number one and this time this is going to be an outlet velocity and I'm just going to say that the outlet velocity is say what 10 meter per second or I can go higher if I want to but that's just a number that I want to stick with for now so let's click OK so we have assigned uh, pressure and velocity boundary conditions so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on mesh edit definition and I'm going to be using this advanced channel refinement basically what uh, SOLIDWORKS would do is it would basically try to um, refine areas where uh, the geometry is really 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 small without us making that guess and it's going to basically do it on its own now if you're interested in controlling this then you can do it you can go to the ma you can go to the manual option and you can kind of play with these numbers but for now I'm just going to stick with automatic and let's just click on OK so with this we have our baseline setup so now let me just click on run and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a new calculation but before I do that I need to do something really really important if I run this calculation as it is what's going to happen is the simulation is going to converge very very quickly that is because uh, you need to understand that convergence is checked by convergence is checked by convergence is checked by looking at the equations and seeing if LHS minus RHS is equal to zero that is what convergence criteria means this sometimes can be very very misleading and it can lead to a quicker solution the solutions would still satisfy your equations but the solution has not yet developed in other words it's not always good to use the automatic convergence criteria that SOLIDWORKS or any other software might provide so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on input data and click on calculation control options so now I'm going to uncheck everything except for iterations and I'm going to say that I need to run for at least 500 iterations before the simulation stops right so this is going to be my criteria for stopping and it says at least one needs to be satisfied and since I've checked only the iterations that's going to be what SOLIDWORKS is going to be looking for and then for goals uh, what I can do is I can just insert a surface goal and I'm going to be selecting the outlet face uh, which is nothing but lid one and what I'm going to be looking at is the average value for total pressure in that face let's just click OK and uh, you know we're just going to run this I'm going to be using 16 cores it's going to be a new calculation let's just run it all right so you can see that I'm also getting this nice preview uh, that's because I've set it up so what you can do is you can just go to insert uh, you can click on preview and what you can do is you can select a plane and you can basically go to settings and pick the variable that you want to look at all right so we are just going to wait till all the 500 iterations are complete and then we are going to check back on the results all right I'll see you guys in the next video bye